Hey guys, welcome to a tutorial on persistent segment trees. Today we will be solving the problem range queries and copies on CSES, which is under the range queries section, and we'll be learning persistent segment tree while we're at it. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to stay notified about future uploads. You should now pause the video and read the problem once on your own. The link to it will be in the description below. Now that you've read the problem once on your own, we basically are given an, an initial array. So let me just write down a dummy array with random elements. And we can basically do three types of operations on it, or rather we have three types of queries. So one query tells you to change an, an, an element of this array. So for example, we could be asked to change the fifth element into any other element. The second type of query asks you for the sum of elements in some range of this array. So a range will be a contiguous subsegment, and we have to report the sum of elements in this subsegment. And the third query asks you to create a copy of this array. So we'll take this whole array and we'll basically make a copy of it. And we basically have a list of arrays, not just a single array. So every time we make a copy, we add our new array to the end of the list. Now on this new list, we can again do those three operations, but we can do it on any array. So now we could also be asked to do those operations on the second array. And if we make more copies, we could be asked to do those operations on any other array. So you should be able to see a O of n squared or n into q solution to this, where we just naively create a new array and to answer our queries, we loop over the array. But that will TLD if you look at the constraints. Now let's consider using a segment tree to answer these queries. So what I could do is I could initially build a segment tree on each array and I could quickly answer range queries that way. But again, now we have to duplicate arrays, which is too slow and we'll end up using too much memory as well. So let's analyze what happens if I create a single element or uh, single segment tree and I'm asked to duplicate it. I'm just going to draw out a segment tree with eight leaf nodes right now. This is a segment tree with eight leaf nodes, and you can say you can see that these arrays have eight elements as well. I'm not filling up the segment tree uh, because I just want to demonstrate what happens. So first, let's we know that we can easily query for any range in log of n, so we don't need to worry about that for now. But if we want to, for example, duplicate this first array and get the second array. Then what we could do is we could basically take this segment tree and we could create a copy of it. Now the issue with this is that it has O of N elements and this is too slow. So we observed something which is when we create a copy, this segment tree is basically the same as this first segment tree we had over here. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm I'm just going to take this first segment tree and I'm going to say that array two, which is our basically the copy, it utilizes the same segment tree. So I'm basically going to point to this segment tree for this array, both of them well. And now if we have range queries, we can easily answer them for either of these. But let's look at what happens when you update an element. When we, let's say we update an element in this first array and we perform some change on the third element over here. Then subsequently we'll have to perform the change on the third leaf of our segmentary as well. And this propagates upwards. 
Now, if you wanted to query this section in our second array, we still had that second, we still changed that third element and our segment tree got changed too. So this will give us incorrect results. So we definitely need a way to be able to copy this segment tree. Let's look at what happened when we updated this third leaf. When we have this update this third leaf, then its parent, its value changes, and subsequently the values for its parents changes as well. So we affect log of n nodes. And that's important because log of n isn't that big of a number. What if we just change log of n nodes or create new nodes? So let's consider creating log of n nodes here when we duplicate this array or when we update the array. So what I'll do is I'll take So I'm going to create a new root node because the value for it changes a new left child, a new right child for that, and then a new left child for that, which basically corresponds to this whole path. And what I'm going to do is I know that the rest of the segment tree did not change at all. So I'm basically going to say that you have a le new left child, but you'll use the same right child. So I'll basically point its right child to that old right child we had. Then I'll go down one step, which is basically going to the copy we created in place of this. And we, we have its right child with us. We have a new right child, but we don't have a left child. So I'm just going to link this left child to it. So the right child is this new one. And the left child is this old one. Now, again, when we went down to this node, we, we, we created a left child, but we don't have a, we don't currently have any right child assigned to this. So I'm just going to link it to the old right child. And this way we created log of n nodes and we were able to actually mimic the functionality of a whole segment tree. Now, if I want to perform any query, for this second or first array, then I basically need to choose the correct root node to go down to. So, so basically in the, for the second array, its root node is still this old root that we had. If we want to create something, we'll use this and go down and you can see that this has the same elements as this initially had when this element was a one when it was unchanged. But if I want to query the first array, I would have assigned this new root node. And I'd say utilize the segment tree, which is constructed using this root node. And I can effectively traverse the whole segment tree using just this root node because I've maintained all of these pointers, these links. So each update, we create log of n nodes in the worst case. We have Q updates and if each and, and if for each of them we create log of n nodes, we basically use Q into log of n memory. Because we have a 512 MB memory limit, this will easily pass. And this way we can pretty much duplicate segment trees. And this is what persistency is. So in a persistent segment tree, you can say that a version of a segment tree is the state of the segment tree after any given update. Now in a fully persistent segment tree, you can take any version and update it or query it. And then you can even update versions if you updated a previous version. By that, I mean, if you, for example, you took this version and you updated it into this, then you would still be able to update this old version into something new. And you can also update this version. So you can basically update any version that you have. So the time complexity for queries will still remain log of n. And for modifications, it's log of n. But we use another log of n memory, which is basically used for creating those new log of n nodes. Now, let's go back to this problem once. You can see that what a persistent segment tree does is basically what this problem is asking us to do. 
So we've efficiently solved this in Q into log of n time and Q into log of n memory as well. Let's just take a look at some code for it. So I'm basically taking in the input. I'm taking into variables n and q, the number of elements in the array and the number of queries. I input the initial array elements. And here I'm basically, I haven't made a separate build function because even though this might be a bit slower, the time complexity still checks out and you can do this. And I'll get to this part in a bit, but essentially I'm, because I'm not initially building the segmentary all at once. And we know that in a persistent segmentary, whenever we update some state, we always create log of n nodes. And one important thing is that we never update an already existing node. We'll always create new nodes because if at any time we update an already existing node, for example, if we updated this, we know that some versions might have links to parents of this node or to this node directly. And if we started traversing those root nodes, then we'll start getting incorrect results for the versions built on top of these old nodes. So for each update, we only create new nodes and we don't exist, uh, don't change any already existing nodes. This list size is basically the amount of array copies I currently have. Now we have three types of queries and I start taking them. So the first type of query is set the value a in array k to x. And I have this modify function and this pointer. So now let's just analyze our segmentary a bit. So a here is our initial array. This child pair of child's array, it basically stores the index to which where it's left and right ch children are. This tree array, it stores the value of some node of the array. And this root tells us the index of the root of the segmentary of any array in our list. This PTR is basically the next empty variable in this tree array. So instead of use, using pointers, I'm just using a static array. I know that I'll be using Q into log in memory. So I've already declared an array of Q into log in size or the maximum size. And I just maintain a pointer to the last used index. And if I need to use another index, then I just increment that. And that's how I store my segmentary. So let's just look at our modify function once. This car is the new node that we're creating. And this previous one is the node that existed in place of it. So for example, this root node would initially be car and this would be previous. Then we go down to the left child because we basically create that and this will become car. And we go down the left child here and this will become prev. Then we go down the right child. This will become prev and this will become car. So we keep on doing that. So initially our base case, which is the same as a normal segmentary. If we're at a leaf node, we just change the value and we return. Otherwise we calculate the midpoint. Now, if the index to be updated is towards the left or equal to the midpoint, then what we do is we know that we have to create a left child. So I say that, so, um, child dot first is always pointing to the left child and child dot second is always storing the index of the right child. So I basically create a new node and I do that by incrementing pointer, which is basically an empty location in my array. Now for the second child, I know that I have to use a child pre that already exists and is basically the right child of prev. So I basically assign that to this. Now I can do the same thing where I go down the left child of the, cu the current node and the previous node. And this process repeats. Now it's the same argument for the right child. For the right child, sorry, not for the right child, for an index that we that is to be updated, which lies towards the right of the midpoint. If it lies towards the right of the midpoint, we basically know that we are going to create a right child, a new right child. So here you can see that I'm creating a new right child by incrementing this pointer. 
and I'm linking the old left child that belonged to prev to this cur current node and then I'm recursing again which is basically the same as a normal segment tree now in the end we basically say that the current value of this node is equal to the sum of its two children this is just a helper function so that I don't have to give in these two arguments all the time but new version previous version is basically this is the new root that we're using and this is the old root that we're linking the segment tree to the query function basically remains the same we already have information about the left and right children of any node so this is the same query function as you would see in a normal segment tree the only difference is that we have to find out the uh, indices of the left and right children because we haven't stored them using 2 into i and 2 into i plus 1. So we just do that over here and here. So now coming back to this, we create a new node, new root, and we start linking stuff using the old version, which is root of k. So root of i stores the root of the segment tree of array k in the list. This is the position to be updated and this is the value we need to change it to and so initially i stored this new root in a variable because i didn't want to change the root node that we'd already stored in the array because we need to pass it in here so i basically set it equal to the new root after we've done a modification now for type 2 queries we basically need to query the sum which is pretty easy we know the root node that we need to use we use that and then we query for the sum in the third type of query, we need to create a copy of the array. So you saw that when we create a copy of an array or a segment tree, it remains the same. So for now, I'm just going to say that the new the root of this new array, the root of the segment tree is basically equal to the root of the array that we're making a copy of. And we know that we will always create new nodes while updating. So we won't be getting any incorrect results. Coming back to this part, this is basically the same thing as what I did here. I know that the previous root of this array was this. Then I create a new root. So I pass in the new root and the previous root. And I get my initial array. It gets built with the new root set to the latest root. So we'll have a bunch of node copies in the start that won't actually be required. You can prevent that by using a build function but you can do this as well and that is what segment trees basically are so if you enjoyed this video consider subscribing to the channel and pressing the like button also press the bell icon to stay notified about future uploads